Liebe Filmer und Fotografen und Koloristen und solche, die es werden wollen. Ich hatte vor einer ganzen Weile ja angekündigt, dass ich eine Business-Video-Interview-Reihe plane. Und konkret bedeutet das, dass ich eigentlich Personen, die ich kenne oder kennengelernt habe und die in interessanten Positionen in der Film- und Fernsehwelt arbeiten, ganz gerne für ein kleines Interview vor die Kamera zerren möchte, um zu erfahren, welchen Werdegang sie genommen haben, welche Hürden es zu überwinden gab und was die Leuten raten können, die denselben Beruf heute ergreifen wollen. Das Ganze startet jetzt. Ich werde eine neue Playlist anlegen und in den nächsten Monaten immer mal wieder, wenn ich die Gelegenheit habe, ein neues Interview mit jemand Interessantem hinzufügen. Für dieses erste Video hatte ich die Gelegenheit, mit Blake Jones zu sprechen. Blake ist Kolorist und hat an Filmen wie Stanley Kubrick's 2001 oder Freitag der 13. oder Poltergeist gearbeitet. Und als ich mit der Idee auf ihn zukam, meinte er auch wirklich sofort, hey klar, lass zusammen ein Video machen. Also echt ein sehr, sehr bodenständiger Mensch. Ähm, danke auch an Teltec Rhein-Main, bei denen wir das so schnell und unkompliziert drehen konnten. Das war echt absolut super. So, ich will euch gar nicht weiter voll quatschen. Ich habe äh, das Interview allerdings auf Englisch geführt. Wer möchte, kann Deutsch deutsche Untertitel einfach hinzuschalten. Viel Spaß! Um, Blake, great of you to spend some time for okay. this little talk. Uh, first of all, could you explain what actually is your job? Okay, uh, I'm a colorist. I've been working in the motion picture industry for over 30 years. Uh, I started off in Hollywood. Um, in Hollywood, when we first started doing color grading, it was quite a different situation. You were using the color grading technology that was in a film scanning machine. And so we were working on pictures like 2001 Space Odyssey, Poltergeist, uh, Brainstorm, Forbidden Planet. All these types of movies were actually being done. We had to do the remastering for um, DVD and all of basically the whole home video market. And um, then it f eventually migrated into file-based um, scanning. So then we were doing more restoration or digital intermediate of movies. So we were doing such as titles such as For a Fistful of Dollars, the restoration of this, where we would have to actually produce a brand new negative of the picture. I'm kind of a digital native guy. Yeah. I've never worked with non-software-based filmmaking stuff, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, How did this whole um, process work when you started? How did color grading work in a pre-software era? Basically, the way it would work would be you would get the actual negative of the movie. You put it onto a film scanner. The film scanner machine would allow you to see the time code. And then you would go through and adjust the color correction of each scene for the film. And then it would memorize it on a time code basis on a scene by scene. And then what would happen is then you would play it out to a digital tape format, or later on it was actually going to be digitized to a file then. Okay, you mentioned you started in Hollywood. Yes. How, how did you learn your craft? How, how did you become a colorist? It was more like trial by fire, basically. Um, somebody came into me one day when I was working as a tape operator and they said, oh Blake, you've got uh, film experience. Uh, we want you to learn how to be this thing called a colorist. And they said, here's this movie, you've got five days to learn. <laughs> okay. And so I graded the film and I, they looked at it and they said, oh, no, you did a pretty good job, it looks nice. Okay, here's the next movie. How long do you actually need to grade, for example, a, a full feature film? Uh, generally, it usually takes about a week for a full Just feature film. Just one week? One week. So it's usually one reel in one day. Wow. Cer certain films, you are more constrained in time. We had a... Um, for example, in the case of 2001 Space Odyssey, we had, this is a 10 reel movie, mm -hmm. so we only had three days to do the picture <coughs> because it was, excuse me, because it was, um, they had a deadline to meet. I had come back from vacation and they said, okay, it's got to go out. Okay. So I worked very long hours those three days to finish the picture. Okay. And, and how do you approach color grading or your work? Do you, do you create a look in your mind and then try to recreate it in software? Or do you just play around sometimes? Well, or? in this case, when we're doing movies like this, we actually look at the film material and then see what the, the director of photography and the director of the film had envisioned for the picture and then recreate it. Um, in some cases, for home video releases, they would send a theatrical copy of the film over and we would view it in a theater and then say okay make it look like this and then you would match it to that 
So basically you had to memorize the colors in your brain and then afterwards translate it to the screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, would you say color grading is more of a, or it demands a certain amount of talent or is it more like a craft you can learn if you just practice hard enough? It's a combination of both. You can pick it up if you have enough talent for it. Um, some people, it requires a tremendous amount of practice. I found that people who were working as color timers in labs did very well as digital colorists. The problem was is that they would take too long to do things because they saw all the limitations that they had in a film laboratory and then they tried to do it as a colorist and they said, oh wow, I've got all these other things I can work on. So they said, uh, now I can fix this and fix that. And then people would look at the bill afterwards and realize that the person took something like, you know, Uh, two weeks to do the movie and this is well, we can't bill these people this kind of money because it's way too expensive you know <laughs> yeah. um, and nowadays you work with DaVinci Resolve mainly yes mm -hmm. is it your favorite color grading software so to um, say? I've worked with DaVinci Resolve since version one um, at one point I worked for the company DaVinci I wrote the operator manual for Resolve from version one to version six and I worked very closely with the developers of the software and so I used to work with DaVinci when they made their film restoration software which was called Revival and then before Resolve they made hardware-based color correction systems which was the DaVinci 2K and the DaVinci Renaissance. The difference with a hardware-based and a software-based um, color corrector is with a hardware-based color corrector you want to have a new feature you have to buy another board that goes in. Whereas with a software base, it's just a new software revision and then everything is changed. Mm. Would you say your job has become easier with technology evolving or has it become maybe more complex? In a way it becomes more complex, but it's you can do more complex things quicker with software. Okay. Do you, for example, also use LUTs from time to time like many smaller filmmakers do to just save time? Um, I only use LUTs when I am working on a feature film. So basically I need a LUT for calibration purposes so that what I see in the theater when I'm grading a movie is going to be what I'm going to get in my final result. Mm. Okay. Do you have any tips for maybe beginners today who are just starting to get into the world of color and try to learn color grading? Or what, what is the best way to not just learn a software but learn how to grade? Best way to do it is don't get too complicated. Keep it simple. Lots of practice. Okay. Yeah. Well, then just to come to an end, one last question. Do you have any project, any film which you would consider your maybe best work? Or which are you proud of or maybe your strangest project? Something memorable? Uh, okay, the two best projects I did, I did a film called Poltergeist. And from that, Steven Spielberg. From Steven Spielberg. And so I was very pleased with that uh, title. It came out very well. And then I also did a film called 2001 A Space Odyssey. And that one was very, came out very well. And so I was very pleased with that one. Do you usually work at day or at night? Because in many people's imagination, color grading is something you do down in your cave when it's dark. You're just a, a person of the night. Um, is this just a cliche? Well, it's kind of a cliche because, for example, when you first start, when I first started as a colorist, I was working in the what we call the swing shift, which is five o'clock in the afternoon until two in the morning. Um, it's not a bad shift because it's nice because you're working when the boss is home and all that and you can just go out and have a nice dinner and you can work at your leisure and everything and it's not overly bad time. At one point then when I was making the transition to the day shift I had to work four o'clock in the morning until two in the afternoon which is awful because I'm not a morning person and so I don't really translate to that very well. And you can actually see the stuff that I would grade at four o'clock in the morning didn't look all that terribly nice because you know, <laughs> I was half asleep. Um, but when I was finally doing the A-title pictures, what we call the A-title films, these are the movies that are frequently supervised by the directors of the film and usually the most important studio productions. So when you're doing films like uh, Batman and Lethal Weapon 2 and 
uh, Poltergeist and 2001 and Brainstorm and things like that, those are all done during the day shift. So you're starting at eight in the morning and working till five or whatever, five or six in the evening, and that's it. Mm. Okay, cool. Well, yeah. thank you for your time. Oh, my pleasure. What's next on your schedule? Just a little bit of a rest at the moment. Okay, very, very <laughs> yeah. good. Thank you for your time. Oh, my and, pleasure. And, well, um, much success in the future. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, das war ein Interview mit Blake Jones. Um, ich hoffe, wir konnten euch spannende Einblicke in die Welt des High-Level-Color-Gradings geben. Wenn ihr Fragen habt, postet es doch einfach in die Kommentare. Und ansonsten lasst mir gerne ein Like oder ein Abo da, wenn ihr heute noch keine Liebe vergeben habt. Und ich freue mich dann bis aufs nächste Video. Bis dahin. Ciao.